Hey everyone, welcome back to Exploring Still Connected. Today we are really excited about giving you a detailed look at our new home, also known as our Camino 88 Kingstar Camper. Um, in the coming months, we will give you more detailed reviews of certain aspects of the camper. So today is just gonna be a very general walkthrough, but we're excited to show it to you and come along with us. Let's check it out. All right, so first things first, we'll start on the exterior of the camper. Uh, we went with the Clover Mist Gray color from Kingstar, uh, fantastic color. Um, if you've seen some of our previous videos, we've actually used it as a projector backdrop and it works great in the dark. Um, additionally, you probably noticed, but we have a lot of external storage. So we'll start right here. Um, this is a custom garage that Kingstar made for us. They are building these garages going forward. So if you have a flatbed pickup and you wanna get a garage, um, this is available. It has these really sweet doors that kind of have that uh, gall wing style. I just say it's that back to the future DeLorean look. Everything is made out of aluminum in this garage. It does have some LED lights that run around the top. Uh, we are planning to actually put a bike slide in here. So a slide that we could have here, mount our bikes on it, pull all the way out on either side. It is a full pass through. That way we could access our bikes and then probably put some extra gear in there. Uh, there are some directional lights in here as well. So if the camper is not on the back of the truck, we do have directional uh, tail lights and brake lights on the back of this garage. Okay, next, so as we set back a little bit, um, we have our fresh water intake. So this will fill the 32 gallon four season tank that's inside the camper. We also have an inlet right here for our side saddle water tanks. We have auxiliary 15 gallon water tanks on each side of the bed. And that gives us a total of 62 gallons of fresh water. You can actually access those water tanks from back here. Um, this is our side saddle storage. Um, this is also from Kingstar. It's attached directly to the camper. Our water tanks are inside side. This is all padded right here and we also have some LED lights inside. Um, one of the other nice things here is this is actually very solid. Uh, these are some steel cables that are holding this up so this acts as extra counter space when we're working outside. All right so a couple other things uh, that we see. Uh, the first thing I'll show you is they have a custom vent for their AC unit. So here on the side is the intake and exhaust for the AC unit. Um, typically you see RVs and you see this big AC fan vent on top. This doesn't have that. Um, this is all vented on the side so we actually keep a lower profile of the camper. Um, additionally, they do have these LED lights that are dimmable on both sides so we have some nice scene lighting when we're just hanging out camping. And then back here, after a long day of biking or you know just out in the grind, if we need to wash our bikes off or take a little shower outside, we do have a cowboy shower set up outside as well. Okay, so we opted for the Rack Pack rear entry system. Um, Kingstar does offer numerous variants to get into the camper. Some are more low profile, some allow easier access to the hitch. Um, others have excess storage like what we have here. So with the Rack Pack, uh, one of the cool features here is we do have this storage. This does store the Olympian 5500 grill. So this is a fantastic little grill right here. It has a quick connect for LP. Um, that also ties in right here to the LP quick connect right here. These do have valves, so they shut off on each side. Um, and then what we're using this additional storage space is for our hoses, for the LP, um, and then also our leveling block. So great location for that. These steps fold down. They actually lock in place right here. So this is all lockable, but this also acts as a, a secondary retention system just in case that lock for some reason fails. It's not gonna come sliding out and our grill's not gonna go flying down the interstate as we're driving down the road. Stepping over just a uh, hair, uh, we can see this is actually the rack tower. So again, we're gonna be on the road full time. We wanted to get as much storage as we can with the garage, the side storage, the rack pack, and now the rack tower. We have 
excessive amount of storage. Um, so much so, we're not really sure what we're gonna put in here yet. Probably skis or snowboard or wet gear, maybe our muddy mountain bike gear at the end of the day, but uh, this is a nice closet space. So if you really wanted to, this could just be an external closet for whatever you wanna put in there. And then finally, coming around this side, we slide this and we have a nice little cabinet for a uh, auxiliary generator. So we have the Honda 2200, perfect fits designed for that, as well as designed for three roto packs. And these are our two gallon roto packs. Uh, three of them fit perfectly in this compartment. Last for external features, we do have a external outlet. Um, we have our two 20 gallon LP tanks. They go right here, nice actuated arms to pop this open. Scared the crap out of me the first time I use it. And I think that's about it for the outside. I did forget to mention we do have shore power um, right here. So if we do want to plug into shore power, we have that outlet there. And then we have these individual outlets on all four corners, which that's going to be for our electric jacks so that we can lift this off the camper. And then for connectivity, uh, we do have a Wii Boost um, that comes stock from Kingstar, or we opted into it in their uh, wireless or connectivity package. We also have a Wi-Fi extender inside, and we have the antenna on top of the roof, which you can't see. Um, the other thing, and we'll show you, we'll get out the drone shortly, but we do have 800 watts of solar on top of the camper, and we do have a plug on this driver's side if you want to add an additional 200 watts of solar to feed the battery. So, um, the weather's getting a little rough, it's starting to rain. Let's take it inside. Welcome to the inside. All right, so moving to the inside of the camper, we'll go from back to front. First thing we want to show you, which was one of the major selling points for us, was the bathroom. So most campers you think of have probably a wet bath, which means the toilet and the shower are together so the toilet will get wet. So this camper looks like it has a wet bath, but it's actually a dry bath. So features in the bathroom, we have a sink in here. We also have a nice mirror and some shelving for um, storage. And then obviously you see here we have the toilet. So if you want to use the toilet while it's sitting here, small people can fit in there. But for me and for Reyes, we just turn it like this. It's a swivel head toilet, so you can use it just like this. We have the cassette toilet. There's a couple other options you can get as well, but we prefer the cassette. If you would like to shower, they have this ingenious design where all you have to do is push a button on the toilet. So I'm gonna push that button and then pull the toilet out. And here's the shower curtain. So you can just open up the shower curtain. It's latched right now. And if you want even more privacy, you can swivel this out. It just holds the door in, close the door, take a shower. So another aspect that we have in here is just storage space. You can see this little bar. Some people might think that's a little weird right now, but um, this whole area is empty space, right? Unused space. So they just created a rack so you can store wet items there. You can store more jackets there, whatever you need to store in the shower. Cause when you're out camping, you're not going to be showering a ton. So it's just extra storage space. And then to move the toilet back into the shower, all you have to do is push it back in and come down here and latch it with this button. All this you could do with your foot. There you go, all set. So one thing we love about Kingstar campers is their use of space. Everything has a purpose. So there was empty space here. So what did they do? They put this bar in for a shoe rack. You can see we have a couple shoes in here. Right above the shoe rack, we have this little shelf. We put things like keys in here, things you need easy access outside of the camper. Also right here, we have the breaker box. So easy access to all your breakers, your fuses for the camper. Uh, we also have the breaker for the jack stands. So jack stands, obviously there's four on this camper so that we can lift it off the truck anytime we need to move it or if we just want to put the camper down in one location and take the truck with us. We also have the control switches for the outside lights and they're also on a dimmer, which is really handy. And then this is also the jack um, control switch to move them up and down. We also have 
a remote switch for that as well. And then these, this light right here, uh, dimmable light switch for a little running light board that goes underneath here so you can easily see where you're walking. We actually use that as a night light pretty often. Um, we also obviously have an outlet here. Well, moving up higher, we have a shelf that has great ha uh, hanging space for jackets, anything you wanna hang in here. It has our uh, fire extinguisher in it. It also has light switches for some of the main lights in the camper. And then you'll see a couple of holes in here. So this bottom hole is actually for toilet paper storage. So you can load your toilet paper in here. You see we have rolls. And then to access them, once you need them, there's just a little bar you pull out easy access to your rolls of toilet paper. A little higher up, we have the same thing for the paper towels. So we'll show you on the other side, but you can load paper towels into this hole and then they'll be available on the other side when you need them. So the next thing in this area is one of my favorite things and that is the spice wrap. Campers you wouldn't think have a lot of cabin or pantry space, but this one has a nice little pantry for our spices. Just open it up right here. Uh, adjustable shelves which is really nice and then this locks it in place so that when we're moving we don't have to worry about these things getting thrown around the camper. So the next thing in this area that we have running pretty constantly when we're in the camper is the Max Air Fan. You'll find these in most campers. It's just great to keep the airflow going through the camper. It works extremely well for us. And one thing that Kingstar does really well is they keep the aesthetics going in the camper. So when you're not using the Max Air Fan, here's a really nice cover. Also helps with insulation in the camper. Cool, so stepping into the kitchen, just a quick highlight. So DJ already showed you the paper towel dispenser loader. And on this side right here, uh, let me move the Keurig out of the way. You can see we have a recessed paper towel rack right here. Paper towels drop down from the top. We do have this nice Keurig that is very much on brand with our lifestyle. We love coffee and drink copious amounts of it throughout the day. We do have some pour overs and other coffee situations stored up top, but this is nice when you just need that quick fix. Kingstar also does a good job of just using very simple designs for retention but very clean and elegant lines because of it so let's go ahead and look at the rest of the kitchen so starting on this side from the top uh, we do have a little cubby up top that we put things such as trash bags right now we'll have the cover for the fan right up here so we do have these cabinets right here we are going to be using this as our connectivity cabinet it is optional to have this as a microwave from Kingstar uh, we opted to go microwave less um, and have the additional storage space. In this case, we're gonna be putting a PEP link in here as well as our Starlink modem router, and then probably doing a um, camera charging battery bay in this cabinet in the future. Everything is soft close. They do have these locking RV hardware that works fantastic and it looks great. Um, and as we move down, you have this nice little drawer here. This is going to be our silverware drawer for us going forward. Again, everything is soft close. And then we do have this pull out trash can. So we have two small trash cans right here. Again, soft close. So moving over a little bit, so we do have a nice stainless steel sink right here. We do have a, a tall faucet so you get your pans and pots into here, no problem. Um, this faucet does swivel, uh, which is very nice. Again, if you need to put a larger pot in here, uh, you do have that access. We do have these sliding windows. These are fantastic. You could leave them open if you wanna drive down the road and air out the camper. These work great for that. They also have these blackout curtains, which are great for additional privacy. They also work well as a projector screen. If you've seen some of our previous videos, we've definitely used these for that. Up top, we have additional cabinet space. So up here right now, we do have a lot of our coffee and other accessories in here. Uh, we still have a bit of organizing to do and we wanna get some bins that we can store stuff in. And then we do have an additional cabinet right here. Again, great use of space. Nothing really goes untouched by Kingstar. They really do a great job of maximizing the amount of storage that you get in this small camper. All right, so moving down from the sink, um, right below here, we have the Truma Combi. So this is this unit down here. This is going to be our water heater as well as camper heater. Um, this runs on both LP and electric. We typically run it off of LP. We have two 20 gallon tanks outside that we showed you earlier. If we do run out of LP, uh, well, it's a bad day for us, but we can switch it over to our battery bank. Uh, we prefer to use it on LP because we like to save our battery bank for the other tech and gear that we have in here. Um, additionally, you can see we had some room to 
store some cleaning supplies down here. There's a little bit of additional space you can store things like that and we're gonna see if we can do something up top, maybe hang something from the front or from these doors just to maximize the space. But for the most part, the Chumacabi does take up this. All right, so stepping over to the oven, we did opt for a gas range. Um, so we do have a three burner stove top. In addition to that, we do have a oven. So this top shelf right here works as our oven. Um, this is again, all gas. Kingstar does offer an electric stove top only. You do get some space back down below if you go with just the electric stove top. You would probably wanna check out their website to see what other options they have for here. I know they do have a few different options. Um, so below the oven for us, we do have additional storage. This is another cabinet. This drawer just slides right on out. Uh, we have a lot of our staple foods in here. And then coming over to the right side. So this position right here that I'm in right now would be where I would typically be working in the kitchen. Uh, so we have access to the table right here that I could prep on, access to our fridge, the stove, the sink, whatever we need. And as you can see, we actually have a pretty decent sized fridge right here. So the freezer as well, we weren't expecting to have a fridge and freezer of this size, but because of the Truma Combi unit we opted for, Kingstar does provide a slightly larger fridge. On top of the refrigerator is our AC unit. So this is a very cool design of the AC unit right here. Again, nice aesthetics being maintained by having a cover when we're not using the AC unit. This just runs right on our inverter. So the 3000 watt inverter that we have will power this AC unit off our battery bank and we can run that all night if we would like to. Additionally, just a reminder, this vents directly out to the side of the camper. So there are no vents, no fans up on top of the roof like you're probably used to seeing on other RVs. And that does help keep the profile of this camper lower than typical. Let me just close this up. Last, right here we do have the uh, control center for the battery bank. So this is a Victron GX monitor. So we could turn on and turn off our inverters. We do have two inverters on here. Uh, we do have our Truma Combi control unit right here. And then we have a couple switches. This is for our water pump. Uh, one is for our 4G uh, cell booster, so the Wii Boost. Um, and then we have an additional switch that's not hooked up to anything yet, but if we wanted to set up another DC item or tool, we could wire that up to this switch. We have a voltage monitor and then two USB-C A ports right here. There are a couple switches which is for our lights that are touch sensitive and then also dimmable. And again, as Deidre said, all the lights in here are pretty much dimmable. The only ones that aren't are gonna be our reading lights up by our bed. So yeah, that's it for the kitchen. Um, I love how they put some aluminum or stainless steel. I'm actually not sure on the sides here, but all the high wear areas that you would typically see, you're gonna see either aluminum or stainless steel, which really helps to keep uh, the aesthetics, but also gives us the confidence that this is gonna last for quite a long time. All right, so before we leave the kitchen, which doesn't take a lot of time to do, um, I'm gonna go into the floor. So one of the things that is new for 2023 and all the Kingstar campers is they only have two of these floor cabinets and then two drawers that are on the step. They used to have three and now they have two. And the reason they did that is because they extended the battery bank, which I'll show you here in just a minute. And by extending the battery bank, they made more room for batteries, as you could imagine but they did have to make this cabinet space a little bit smaller. That said, these are still very nice, very well-built cabinets. You can see right here, tons of room. We'll probably put some of our off-season gear, or jackets or other items that we're not accessing all the time down here. These are pretty much plywood. They do have a nice aluminum trim, um, some really good stainless steel hardware, and the fit and finish is fantastic. Everything fits in here nice, tight, and snug, and they don't creak at all when you're walking on them. These cabinets right here, again, same type of hardware, so you do have these nice locking hardware. Uh, we do have really nice soft close sliding drawers. Um, and these are pretty deep drawers, lots of space. Uh, we actually use the other one for all of our pots and pans and additional cups. And it works fantastic for that purpose. All right, so since we're already talking about things that are on the ground, uh, might as well dive into the electrical. So our battery bank is this compartment right here to our right. Like I said, this is larger for 2023 in all models. So not just the command center, which we're gonna talk about here shortly. And the reason they did this is because in this footprint, they could fit up to three 270 amp hour batteries. Um, and those would be the Battleborn Game Changers. They do have battery uh, banks that range as small as 100 amp hour HD 
amp battery cells as well. So if you can imagine three Battleborns take up this whole space, a 100 amp hour battery is actually gonna give you a decent amount of storage back. We kind of have a hybrid battery bank setup, and that's mainly because we wanted to have some additional storage to be a litter box. So we have our three batteries right here on the right. We do have the cutoff switches right next to it. And this cabinet right here, we're actually using as a litter box. Um, but we do have a little egress, uh, entry and egress for our cats. We're getting a custom 3D printed litter box that's gonna go in here. So it's kind of like their safe space. Um, and then we can access and clean it from the top whenever we need to. So let me just move over real quick. Coming over to this side, we have two cabinets right here. But before I go into those, I just want to mention that this space right here, where we have that entry and egress for our cats to go into the litter box, this is actually going to be accessible in other models where you don't have a litter box and you put additional storage, such as a couple gallons of water. So opening up this, let's just slide that to the side. Um, we do have access to our 32 gallon four season water tank in here. This is where we're going to come to if we ever need to drain the water. We'll find all the valves and everything in here. Additionally, if we need to do the auxiliary water tanks to fill up our main, we would come in here and those valves are associated with this. Our water pump is here um, and additional some breakers are here as well. Last is going to be this cabinet. Um, and as you can see here, we have the Victron uh, Multi Plus 12 volt 3000. So this is a 3000 watt inverter. This powers the entire camper. This is all ran off our lithium battery bank. So far, it's been working fantastic for us. This inverter acts as a charger. So if we plug into shore power, that's gonna go through this inverter and then charge our batteries, or it will also run the house and AC off of shore power. Yeah, that's about it. The Victron inverter is fantastic, love them. I uh, love them so much, as a part of the command center, they actually have an additional 500 watt Victron inverter underneath the floor right here. And that's gonna power our central console that is associated with the command center build. All of the command center builds going forward will have that additional 500 watt inverter. And that's going to power three outlets on the center console. And then we are modifying that inverter to also run an outlet that's going to go up to one of these top cabinets so that we can do for our connectivity cabinet. We did send feedback back to Kingstar about adding that additional outlet up top for a connectivity cabinet. I mean, it sounds like they're going to be adding in that additional outlet up top for all future command center builds. So moving on to the command center portion of our build. Um, so Kingstar actually has, I believe, five different build styles now. The differences in the builds are mostly based around this area. So they have a normal dinette that you would see in a lot of campers. They have a couch that uh, runs the length of this wall right here. They have a couch that converts into bunk beds for kids. They have an open layout where there's nothing in this space. We've seen a lot of people do that if they have big dogs or something and they want to put a dog bed here. And then this layout is their brand new layout they're calling the command center. They built it centered around people like us, digital nomads who are going to be on the road full time and working from their camper. So the great things about this build are one thing, these chairs, they're actually really comfortable and they're free floating chairs. So you can move them anywhere and they swivel. They also have down here a storage area, which is basically a file cabinet size area. There's three of these in this camper. So there's one on each chair, and then there's also one right here. This one's a little narrower, but also a little bit longer. So it's a big storage container right here. Also in this command center unit, there's another drawer, which you can house multiple things. We have our projector in here right now. This piece right here is actually a support. With the command center, you can still use this space as a dining room or as your office space just by pulling out this table and there you have a big dinette table. We actually use this space a lot when we're cooking as a prep station because you can just turn right around and utilize that space right there. So they have a little, I would almost call a file hanger, but it's a big enough space for a laptop, a portable monitor, anything that you can just store right in here. It works great, store them vertically. Each side also has this pull out desk. So 
I have an entire L-shaped desk right here. This is perfect for working. You have a great view out the window. It's just a fantastic space. And as Ray has already mentioned, both sides of this console have outlets and there's also outlets on the front. On this side of the command center, you also have a pull-out desk right here. So if you just need a quick workspace, you could even have this up and just be hanging out in the camper and you just need a quick workspace right here. There you go, just pull it right out. So looking at the top of the command center, from this side to that side, we have a light switch. So there's two light switches here, both power and overhead light strip. There's one here and one on that side for the two separate working spaces. They're both also dimmable like all the other lights. This is just the temperature probe for the Truma Combi. Here we have two more USB ports, which is really nice, as well as an outlet. This switch in the middle is for the Wi-Fi extender. So if we're in a Starbucks parking lot or at an RV resort that has free Wi-Fi and we're somewhere where that Wi-Fi signal is a little bit lower, we can turn on this Wi-Fi extender and that will boost that Wi-Fi signal so that we can use it for working. So up here we have an open storage cabinet. We have a smaller cabinet right here which the bottom half of it is taken up by the electronic housing for these outlets but it's still a nice little cabinet in here. And then back here we have a very large cabinet space to store quite a bit of stuff. You'll notice here that I'm standing up straight. So I'm 5'5 and I have no issue standing on this second level of the camper. Um, I do hit the top close to the wall, but generally I'm able to stand in every part of this camper, which is great for me. All right, so moving on to our bed space, as you can see, we have the north-south layout rather than the east-west, which would mean the, the bed is facing the 90 degrees to this one. We have about a six inch mattress here. It is memory foam. It's surprisingly comfortable for an RV mattress. We have not had any issues sleeping on it. And also this is your full size queen bed. It's not your typical RV queen. It is actually a legitimate queen fits normal queen size sheets, which is really nice. Near the bed, we have a lot of storage. So you can see we have storage boxes along the side. These are the height basically of the bed space. They're great for rolled up clothes, anything like that. We have cabinet space in the back. There's two shelves in there. There's actually outlets on the top of the cabinet and there's a hole in the side. So you'll see there's shelves behind them with which you can put all of your phones, anything you need to charge, and you can have those outlets within the cabinets feeding those devices, which is great. There's also a hanging space right up here. We have some hangers on there already and a new addition that Kingstar actually did to their most recent models is this shelf right here. This used to be empty space. It's great, they just made additional storage space. It's a big shelf, so it's really nice. Additionally, lighting back here. We have a three-way light switch that powers lights all the way around the bed space. They're also dimmable. And then we have two reading lights in the back that are just push button reading lights for if you don't wanna disturb the other person sleeping in the bed. So moving to the driver's side of the sleeping area, there's a little bit of additional storage over here. Um, we have a cabinet up here. We currently have our books in it. It also has our Wii Boost. So when we need this, we can just set this out and that will extend our signal. And then along the side of the fridge, there's a 12 volt outlet and some heater vents as well, which is really nice. So I already mentioned the reading lights. You can see them right here. They're just push on off and they actually swivel around a little bit to really get in the direction you need them in. One of my favorite things in this camper, well, probably my favorite thing in this camper is the sunroof. So the sunroof comes with a mesh screen. If you wanna leave it open, it comes with a blackout curtain or blackout shade, I guess and then it fully extends to open. 
So there's a couple of locks on here. And then you just open these three handles and push it straight up. And this is also your roof access actually. So I can access all the solar panels from here, get a nice breeze through here as well. It's fantastic. So as mentioned, this is the roof access. So you can see behind me are 800 watts of solar. We're also gonna have our Starlink up here, but that's not installed yet, more to come. All right, so last, I just wanna talk about fit and finish. Kingstar really does a great job of buttoning up these campers. You know, the, the ceiling is all soft touch uh, cover. They have these nice buttons. They give it a really good aesthetic look. The trim is fantastic. And I mean, when you come in here, it just feels very warm and welcoming. Uh, they do have a few different color options. I believe we went with the coastal color option, um, which is a lighter grays and whites. They have a cascade color option, which is a little bit darker grays. They do have like a Southwestern style color option and maybe some others. Definitely check out their website if you want to see what their interior options look like. Um, that said, you come in here and it doesn't feel like your other campers you know most of those are kind of marine grade they're white very sterile is what i describe them as and when i come in here hang out like i feel like i want to hang out i feel like i'm in a cabin i feel like we're home um so that was a huge really just icing on the cake as we looked at the floor plan the layout and then how welcoming everything was far you know we've had the camper for just about a month now um, really enjoying it there's definitely some little tweaks and modifications that we want to do but i mean what a great foundation and what a great you know, platform to start with but um, yeah, so that's it for our Kingstar Camino 88 review. Uh, hopefully you have a better idea of what the command center floor plan looks like and what's available. Um, there's a lot of options that you can get with these kind of campers. This is just what we thought was going to be the best fit for our needs and what we wanted to do going forward. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, leave it down in the comment section below. We'd love to uh, reach out and talk to you guys more about our camper. You can subscribe, follow along. We're gonna be doing more detailed reviews of the camper, um, little, aspects of living in it and add-ons and modifications over the next couple of months so stay tuned for that and uh we'll catch you guys in the next one thanks everyone <laughs>